we've got a very interesting evening ahead of us. I've already spotted several items of jewellery that I lost a few years ago. <laughs> so, yeah. so I'd like to introduce especially Dan and um, Nigel, and then the Nathan's Magnet Fishing Group. Yep. So hopefully you I see you've always been attracted here tonight. <laughs> and uh, hopefully by the end you'll be hooked. Oh. 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 So, uh, I'm Dan and this is I'm Nigel, Nigel. Um, we're North Ants Magnet Fishing, we've been invited here today to talk to you lovely, lovely people oh. about our uh, wonderful and unusual hobby called Magnet Fishing. Um, we're just waiting for the actual computer to start because we made a whole PowerPoint presentation and all that. Um, so we're going to start off with a few things of like, um, like what is magnet fishing? Now, does anyone know in the room today know what magnet fishing is? Yeah. Well, I used to have a little fair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, even if you had, just raise your hand up. Well, we must go then, not they all know. Uh, yeah, yeah, you, you guys all know, yeah. <laughs> Back in the middle. You're not, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're So, um, so some people that don't know, um, uh, it's not basically us going a month early to the side of a canal or a river and feeding fish with magnetic pellets. And that's going a month later to fish it with a magnet. No, no it's, a lot more com it's a little bit more easy than that. You literally go outside the canal with a really, really, really powerful magnet. And Nigel was just informed me he hasn't brained none of the magnets today. Oh, 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 oh. Nigel! You forgot the extension, Lee. I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I know it sounds funny about the, um, the fish, the magnetic fish, but no, um, magnetic fishing is searching in outdoor, in outdoor waters, slash rivers, slash canals, um, for literally anything magnetic objects, um, like, as we were, selection array of metallic objects here today. Yeah. Cast iron and things like that. Yeah, cast iron. Mainly cast iron is mainly the stronger steel. Yep, steel, stronger material to do it. So is it, is it like these people who go along on the field, you know, with the yeah, it's basically yeah, metal detecting, thing, uh, yeah, yeah, underwater, yeah, but underwater, yeah. Um, magnetic objects, stronger magnets, normally the best. Uh, we use like neodymium. What's it called? Neodymium. Oh, the neodymium, neodymium magnets, <laughs> which is like ferrite, but it's a lot more stronger. You can get ferrite magnets to do it as well. Um, there are two types, as I said, ferrite magnets, which is the same material as your fridge magnets, but a lot more bigger and a lot more stronger. But neodymium magnets are a lot more stronger than, yeah. How long is that going to be? <laughs> <laughs> There's me talking here, and it'll be good for the PowerPoint behind me. I'll carry on, yes. Now, here's where I meant to show you both types of magnets, but no. Here's one, here's the other. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, you, know, put, you know, put your hands up. So like... How? how <laughs> so like, this magnet is a ferrite magnet. I know there's no magnets here today. But just picture this is a ferrite magnet. Yep. It's the same material, as I said, as a fridge magnet. Now, on the other hand, here, yeah, literally, <laughs> we have the neodymium magnet. I think I said that right again, Yeah, that's fine. So that's good. Um, it's a lot more stronger. Um, a lot more expensive. A lot more expensive, yeah. I mean, how... Magnets oh, range from yeah. five up, up to two hundred and fifty pounds. Really? Yeah. Wow. Wow. But yeah, go big, be brave. Yeah, go big or go home. Yeah. Mm. Um, some celebrities actually do do magnet fishing. What do you hook it up? How do you hook it up? Oh, well, I'll, I'll let you explain that. Things like these quite easy because you can tip the magnet and slide it off. Things like safes, usually you end up kicking it to the side and getting it to the edge enough to pull it off because you get a really thick bit of metal, you struggle crowbar or anything like that. Well, I'm using a 500 kilo magnet, so uh, when that hooks on something hard, especially canal side, you struggle. Scaffold pole is the best way. Or with Bryn Mogg, the big lad at the back. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Popeye's good for it as well. But, uh, and he kicks it off, yeah. Yeah, that's it. But they are awkward. If you hit something thick and heavy, it is a problem. When you throw 160 pound out at a time, you pray. But we do take a two ton winch with us as well. So um, we're only used it on 
big items with the grappling hook at the moment, not with the magnet, and I have no need to, because normally if you change the direction, you can pull it away. So you can get away with that, so you don't have to necessarily use a winch. Do you but have to have a license, the same as the world's nope. do? No? No license at all. Some celebrities do magnet fishing, such as I think the, young, the England rugby star James Heskell. Did I say that right now? Heskel. Yeah, Heskell. Um, he told the BBC News online that he does normal fishing as well. Um, but the thing is, with normal fishing, as have we got any fishermen in here today? And your phone! Your phone! <laughs> hey, oh, yeah. And that's a magnet fisher, the UK's number three. Yeah, that's a number three <laughs> magnet fisher. Um, does anyone do normal fishing in here? Oh, it's all like, um, yeah, we have. That's funny, relaxing. That is relaxing, yeah. yeah. But the problem with normal fishing is you could be out for a whole day and literally not catch anything for the whole day. Um, he also said as well, to finish on, um, he likes magnet fishing down to he could, um, he could always go out and he's guaranteed to find something. Even if it's a small piece of, as we got here, small piece of jewellery, like a ring or a copper ring, um, to a massive safe. <coughs> now, it does take a while to pull up from the canal when you've got a massive safe. But um, yeah, some so safe just do it. One. I'll bet you've got no money in here, though. Oh, it is. You find a lot of things in safes. Passports, driving licences, jewellery. Um, they're quite common. All the things you shouldn't have, you find in a safe. Things that people can't get rid of. They'll take the gold out and throw the rest. Got a lot of silver. I haven't got much here, but loads of silver. But they don't want that. It's not precious enough, so it goes straight back in, in the safe. But I'll, I'll let you go on with that when you get to the yeah. finds, yeah? Um, the hobby is a good thing for the environment as, you know, the wildlife and all that. Um, it cleans up all, harm, uh, all harmful magnetic debris from the bottom of the waterways, which in time, if left with, will um, pollute the waters. And in the treasure hunting side of things, I'm going to let you explain to that in a few minutes. <laughs> Is it still preparing? <laughs> <laughs> Um, as we talked about earlier with the ferrite magnets. Oh, oh that's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Yeah. As we talked about earlier with the ferrite magnets uh, and neodymium magnets, they have been. Uh, they have to be strong enough to remove debris from the rivers. Um, there are loads of magnetic strengths and different type of magnets you can get. Um, I think they range from about 15 kg all the way up to 2,000 kilogram pull. Magnets. So, and usually these magnets are like proper, like dinner size plate magnet size. Um, it's thought that boaters first started. I'm going into history now of magnet fishing. It's thought that um, boaters first started magnet fishing with um, which they believe is sea searches because they used to lose their keys overboard, so they used to have to dip their magnets over and try and get them out. It never succeeded, but. <coughs> Um, they only have a 64 kg lift, but it's always strong enough to lift up a set of keys. Um, magnets have changed very much since the Sea Searcher. I keep going on about magnets, and I, it's, it's, <laughs> it's the hobby, I'm sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, they've changed a lot, a lot, like there's two types. You've got the flat side, which is a vertical lift magnet, which it's straight on top of a safe, easy to pull up, and you've got a double-sided magnet, which is basically flat, both sides, and has magnets each side of the magnet. It's a lot more easier to pull in the waters than it is to uh, pull a double-sided, <coughs> single-sided me, sorry. Um, the the single-sided magnets, some people use it, but the double-sided are more, com um, more better type. Um, now we're moving on to how popular magnet fishing is. Uh, magnet fishing is popular around the world. Um, literally, it's really popular. In the USA alone, there's, I'd probably say nearly, like, nearly 50%, 80% of people that do magnet fish. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get me wrong, them numbers are off Wikipedia, so we can't trust Wikipedia, <laughs> can we? <laughs> we can't trust them at all. But um, 
in some parts, <coughs> it is actually banned in some countries, such as France. I think France is the only one. You were telling me the earlier, was, was it just France? France is banned completely, apart France from on is... private ground with the owner's permission. Yeah. France is, yeah, banned. There's um, too many explosives in the war. <laughs> yeah, there is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, we'll get into that later. We'll get to that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, we're moving on to charities, because some charities are actually pinpointed to magnet fishing. Uh, some magnet fishers are doing their part for charities, or for charity, by doing events um, and big meetups, like where all magnet fishers all communicate and just all fish all together happily. Um, to all raise money for charity close to their hearts. Uh, one magnet fisher is doing this, uh, his name's called Scott, he's a very good friend of ours, isn't he? Yeah. Very good friend, he's from Birmingham. Oh, that way. Scottish. Scottish, yeah, he's a Scottish <laughs> from Birmingham. <laughs> he's, um, he runs a YouTube channel, um, along with ours as well, uh, called the Crazy Hire Good Family. He's um, where he goes out every single week uh, to fish for his kids. Um, I think, what's, what's one of his children got? Are we fishing? ADHD, yeah, it's, autism. And their mental health awareness. Yeah, and um, they've found out the side of the canal brings his kids out. It helps with all of that. It calms them down, makes them all relax. Um, and a couple of months ago, we got invited to one of his big charity meetups where nearly a hundred magnet fishermen all came out and fished, all to raise money for charity, um, including us. Now that day, nine hundred and thirty pounds was raised. Was raised for um, where Autism West Midland. So, <laughs> it's a very... Um, that was raised through donations through other magnet fishermen and through a raffle where this guy kept winning everything. <laughs> not fault. No, it's perfectly... <laughs> because I bought too many tickets, but it's a charity. <laughs> it was. There were about 50 tickets in the end, so... It was all for charity. And I even won my own donation back. <laughs> I think I think you donated. I donated an action camera. Yeah. And uh, I want it back. I'll put it back in. I don't want yeah. it. I've got tickets for all sorts, and it was a good day. It was a really good day. That was good to see so many people out enjoying themselves and doing stuff charity yeah. at the same time. Um, there are five magnet companies online that do sell magnets. Purely um, for fishing. Purely for fishing. Yeah. Mm. Um, the main one is. The main one in the UK is online magnet store. Um, you can also get magnets from places like eBay or Amazon, but I really wouldn't trust them. Even though they're cheap prices, never trust them because they do exaggerate the kg weight. They do say 770 kg. You get it, it's like 400. It's really sad. And someone even got a magnet off Wish for like £10, expecting it to be cheap. Turned out to be a little fridge magnet. <laughs> it was about that big. It was, well, it was about that big. Um, so that's all I've got to say about magnet fishing. I'm going to leave you with Nigel, the more interesting one than me. <laughs> the guy you mainly saw a lot more to explain about some of the finds we found. Oh, where should we start? Grenade. Don't worry, it's empty. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one as well. There's been a few of these um, and they've not been empty. They've caused a few crow closures, a few issues, but uh, it does happen. That's a Mills number five, I think about 1915, used right through the First World War, Second World War. Uh, that was pulled up from Leicester. It is actually a not finished one, it's not been threaded in the bottom, it's not had the primer put in, so that one was obviously being transported to where it was being made into a proper grenade and never actually got there or could have been a practice one from the home guard where they just literally threw them, mm. you see. But those, we've found one in Ditchford, there's been two in Earthingborough, three in Leicester. Um, yeah, a few road closures, a few unhappy people. So if you had trouble getting down the A6 one Saturday, I do apologise, it was down. Hey, that's why I had the pin in that. Nah, we took it out. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, grenades are quite popular. Um, from Earthenborough, there's also been a Boer War artillery shell with spigot mortar. All in the same sort of area, but not by us. Um, this is basically our stuff. But um, And we move on. We've got a cannonball. That's quite a nice find. I'll let, I'll let you move forward. Hay, that was from Fotheringhay, yes. So um, where Mary, Queen of Scots is beheaded. But that was a nice find as well. That's heavy. And also a sword handle. That also came out of there. 
So two very interesting finds from there. Uh, that one is in really bad condition. Don't want to try and get any more rust off it because it will literally fall apart. But with that, so yeah, fair bit of weight on there. I um, can't remember how many pound it was. Somebody measured it and said it is. But yeah, that was quite interesting. On the day, also brought out a Browning 9mm high powered pistol and, and 102 9mm bullets. That also came up the same area on the same day. So Fotheringay, yeah, it's been quite kind to us. Uh, I don't think the locals like it because they look at you really funny when you're on their ground. That's the problem because it's a very narrow bridge and every time a car comes up, they go like that. But yeah, we will return to that one sometime. So that was very interesting there. Um, we've got a small, which we believe is like a starter pistol. That came from Leicester. That's a very tiny one. Not been able to get it identified by anybody. Nobody can actually identify exactly what it is. But you can see by the size of it, it is quite small. But um, a guy has said, yes, it would have been a gun, but probably a start pistol. Can't really date that. Guns. Uh, I've had 14 since last October. Um, sawn off shotguns. There's been three of them. Um, yeah, that's probably the other half of the shot sawn off bit, but mm. that's a set of barrels off one, that's a sawn one, and then that's from Thrapston, which is a full set of them, you see. So there is quite a lot of guns in there. Uh, we did, oh hang on, we might have pictures yeah, in a minute. <laughs> There's guns, we can't keep, guns have to be handed in, you know, they can carry it up to a 10 year prison sentence regardless of their condition. So literally, quick clean, few photos, ring the police, they collect. You know, it's like that. Um, I've had quite a few. You get this going, we'll be able to show you a bit more on them. But guns, bullets, do have the end of a 50 cal bullet. That's just the bit that would have come out and uh, hurt quite a bit when it hit you. But yeah, I've got quite a few of them. I've got quite a few other ones which. Oh, yes, we got it! Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think if I had pictures of the fun I was talking, it would make it a lot more easier what I'd do. You have to put it back a little on. Yeah. Put the table. Yeah. Oh, 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 no. it's, it's all dead. Broke it. It's all going wrong. <laughs> it's not what usually happens when we're inside the canal. I've lost two magnets under one bridge of line this year. Oh, that's not <laughs> anyway, now I'll let you carry on. Are we going? Yeah, so guns, if we ever get the pictures, we'll go back to them anyway. Knives, that's another really common thing to find. Yes, he's best find, he's quite happy with this one. Um, slice me hand on it, still actually got a good edge on it. No, that's about 1910. Um, as you see, that's uh, a rope, used for rope untangling and things like that. Also That's it. Yep. But that is actually still got a really good edge on it, considering it's been in the water for God knows how many years. That has still got a good edge on it. You need to all that. I'm trying to damage it too much. That one. Yeah, that's another one. You see, various selection of knives, many different ones. This one that Dan found, which he was really proud yeah. of, hoping to get it out of there and find it in a slightly better condition. But. Unfortunately, same again. Now that one, believed to be a fishing knife, but it's really hard to identify what half of them are. That's the problem. But kitchen knives, dinner knives, things like that, a lot of them. You get lots of knives. I think some more down here, actually. Yeah. Uh, all the finds will be at the front here to have a closer look if you want to come out. So you can have a play with the knife. Like that. closer look. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So that's the sort of things you find. We've found probably 10 or 15 in a day before. Um, some of them are really fresh. You can see they've only literally been in there probably a few days or weeks. Um, but they do do knife amnesties occasionally where knives get handed in and you just literally put them in there. The police are not interested in them, they just tell you to dispose of them safely. 
you know, so it's one of those things that they don't want worrying with things like that. So we just take them home and get rid of them. Yeah, you know. just dispose of them safely. Um, what have we got next then? Asp, that's um, 40 years stuck again. <laughs> that's like the police use, that's one of the batons. Oh, yes. You see, um, that was hound up. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's another thing which they're quite recent, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. They are illegal to take out in public. Um, you can't buy them. It is illegal to buy, but it's not illegal to own one in your own house. You can have one. But if you do actually hit somebody with it and kill them, you will get done for it. But if you hit them with a baseball bat and kill them, you'll get away with it. Because that is only made for one reason, and that is to cause damage to people. So um, that's why they do fall under a slightly different category. Yeah, it's actually funny when we brought that up. Yeah. Because we didn't know what it was at first. And we were sitting and thinking, is it a scroll? And we thought, have we just discovered some treasure map or something? <laughs> yeah, and then we sort of hit it a few times and it came out. So, a bit of home protection. Oh, look. Yeah, what pictures? <laughs> Can everyone see that? No. No. Yes. That's good. Oh, look. That's good. Sorry we didn't have this earlier. Yeah, technical difficulties. Just a technical thing. Yeah. <laughs> Well done. It's going to be slow now, isn't it? Okay, wait, now it's just going to be going on. Got no lights now. We're good. I get used to it all the time. It's only a spanner. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Yep. Oh, Kira, push the back. Yeah. Okay, nice. So, this is all that I went through before the popularity, um, our popular magnet fishes. That was a meeting we did in Leicester. We had about 46 people there, and we pulled out over three tonne of metal. Oh, yeah. Along a, a mile stretch. So, um, I bet the mob was shopping. Also, right. Yeah, um, the road got closed three times, unfortunately, because of some grenades. Um, yeah, it's in the Leicester Mercury. Um, yeah, parts of the city closed off. Two of them were live. There was a rifle grenade, there was a, a Mills grenade, which is the most common one to find, and the another one was an inert. Uh, Mills grenade, but that's after the police said, Can you please stop because it's getting a bit of a problem? <laughs> somebody, somebody just had a quick dip on the way past, and once again, another one was pulled out. So, but we'd left by then, so <coughs> that was that. But it was a good meeting, basically, most of the big YouTubers were there, and um, yes, so much rubbish got pulled out. The scrap man was happy, one of the magnet fish, he took a van load away, and people make money out of it. The scrap gets taken away, and some fishers will make good money out of scrapping it all as well. So not only do you do something for the environment, it's paying for their cost, fuel and that, because we do drive around all over the place and it does get expensive because you're constantly going somewhere different. But um, yeah, there's quite a few people there and there's a few of the YouTubers. But no, that was a good day. So now we're on to your favourite thing. The guns? Guns. Yeah, go on then. I wonder if I can... Give me some pictures. Yeah, I'm trying to give some pictures here, man. Right. If I click on that, does it work? Kira, technical difficulties. <laughs> I wouldn't say they're my favourite, I've just got a lot of bad luck in finding them. Any idea how to get that up? Oh, it works now. Okay. Okay, right. So the guns. 
Right, okay, so we've got a, um, that one there which I showed, because it's not really much of a gun to be honest with you. Cold service revolver, First World, Second World War. That's the Browning which came out of um, Fothering Hay. That's a single shot Mauser, um, that's a German gun, it's about 1915, they're known as sort of the stocking top gun because it was so small and it only fired one shot, so popular amongst the ladies. There it is down there, that's where it came out and that was like after a bit of a clean or a soaking vinegar. And we got sawn off shotgun, that was Andal, um, that came out two minutes after the Colt, which were right next to each other. As you see that was it before and that's it afterwards. Two more from Andal, which is a Smith & Wesson Victory model and a Walther. They were near the um, yeah, they, Farmwell Country Park. Right? They were, they were by the park, yeah, proper chopped up, but they were there as well. This one here, which is unidentified, nobody can identify it. What they think it might be is what they call a jeweler's gun. Jewelers used to make them um, years ago. They used to make five or six of them in the back room. And they say it could be a single shot jeweler's gun. Someone said tranquilizer gun, but nobody could really identify it. It is interesting. It is heavy, but it looks like it's only a single shot. There's nowhere for a magazine. There's no chambers for the bullets to go in. <laughs> So that one, yeah, still unidentified, which is annoying because I like to know what they are, but unfortunately sometimes you can't. And that's the point of it, isn't it? Finding out what they are. It is, yes. You do spend time, but you've only got so long because if someone knows you've got it, then you're getting a knock at the door pretty quick. You know, it doesn't matter what condition they're in. When I have four at home, which was one weekend, armed police come round, they make you stand away from them, they spend a lot of time going through them, and then they just give you your earache because you took them home. But when you ring them at the side of the water, they give you earache because they've got no one to come and get them. <laughs> so it's a bit of an awkward one, but you know you can't just leave it. You've got to take it. We take them home and then make the phone call. They come and collect them at their pleasure, then, which is with four was pretty quick. But um, yeah, so we've got Mills grenade, same as one of them, but obviously that's a complete one. As you see, that's empty. That's still got the cap in the bottom of it. So that was live. That was found in Ditchford in December. That closed the road off for four and a half hours. Um, that is a Vietnam rocket propelled grenade. Um, why it's in Leicester, I couldn't actually explain, but yeah, that's just the tail part of it. That's what fires the missile, but that was still active. Um, that closed the road off for about another four hours. Um, that's a hole that was left by one of these after the EOD came and blew it up. Literally slapped the leg explosive on it and blow it up. That was at Earthenburg on the A6, that's a hole. Uh, another one missile was found the week afterwards, left a hole about five times the size of that. That was a lot bigger one. Um, but they all came out of the same area, like somebody's private collection has been built <coughs> in there. That is a tank missile, an armoured piercing incendiary tip. <laughs> And that's a shotgun barrel. <laughs> Same again, that was Leicester. Um, that was covered in quite a lot of um, rubbish and we was tapping it about because you couldn't really see what it was. <laughs> and he tapped it after me and then once we realised what it was, it has got the military market on this end, but that was another thing that was found um, which closed the road off a week after the meeting, they closed it off three times. So we've sort of moved out of the town centre now, or the city centre, because uh, Leicester is starting to play at home and it's only a quarter of a mile away from there. So, But that did happen a few weeks ago when they were playing at home. Another one got pulled out. So it, Leicester is pretty full of stuff, to be honest with you. Yeah. And now one for the lovely ladies in the room. Yes. We have the jewellery. Jewelry. Oh, okay. right. Travel clock, which I'm sure a few of you will recognise. Um, that watch there wasn't magnetic at all, so you sort of get excited about it, but the little bracket that it was on was metal, that was a problem. Self winding, shook it, worked straight away. Did it obviously yeah. really good, but then you find it's some Singapore thing, £14 on eBay. So <laughs> yeah. it looked really good, and you think, great, it's not magnetic, you just pray that it's good, but unfortunately, it wasn't. You see more watches here, Seiko ones, I've got two of them here, is it a Lewis Arden one I think, another Seiko, and that one does work as well, if you tap it around a bit it does actually start going. That came out of a safe which was in Leicester, it took us two and a half hours to get out, that was quite a big safe, um, but that was a few bits in there, nothing of any value unfortunately, you're not ever going to get that. As you can see, um, them watches those, they came out really well didn't they, yeah, they all worked as well. Uh, the fun story about that one as well, in the right hand corner, and the bags in the middle as well. The one in the middle? Yeah. Right, okay, that was Market Harbour, 
Um, that was just with a grappling hook. That bag came in. Oh, it stank. It was horrible. Um, we have got a fair bit of the jewellery here from out of that one. Same again. That had a lot of silver in it, um, but mostly it's just costume jewellery, rubbish. Um, and we went back a few months later, and that's where the grenade came from. So, although we've done the area, and my first gun, oh, and his first gun, yeah, yes. I was getting to that. Yeah, he got all excited. He's waited a year, but he's got himself a gun at last. Air rifle. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we went there and quite a lot came out. Bullets came out of there and we'd already spent hours there. Bullets came out, the grenade came out, knives came out, he got a gun out. Sunny Castle we couldn't get out, um, which we had two winches attached, no, three winches attached to in the end. We broke two winches, two someones. We then got a four wheel drive on it and broke the rope on that as well. And that was digging itself into the ground and wouldn't come out. So in the end, we sort of give that one up for the moment because I don't know what it is, but it's a bit too big. But you never know, one day we may return. Um, this is all from Indian jewellery. This is from Birmingham on Saturday. That just kept coming. I mean, it looks pretty, but yeah, it, unfortunately, none of it's real. That is gold plate. I did get that one checked out. This is steel with a nice shiny paint on it. But um, yeah, I mean, it's nice stuff to find, but it's of no value, you know, and obviously to somebody it probably was. I would say probably the proceeds of a break-in, they realized it was tat and it's just ended up in the canal in Birmingham. Motorbikes. Oh. <laughs> they are horrible. That one was the A6 at Earthenborough, which was, we could see it, we could hook it with magnets, we could get a uh, grappling hook on it. We managed to lift it a little bit, but it's a long way up, it's about 10, 15 foot. So we dragged it as far as we could and then hooked it on a Range Rover, put the rope on there, and we literally dragged it across the river, across the field, and up onto the road. That was a small pit bike, don't know much about bikes, so I can't tell you a lot. I know what that is because I used to have, but that's a Suzuki GP125. That came out of Market Harbour again. We went one week and we kept hooking on it, but we couldn't get it. We hadn't got a grappling hook. And after a while, a mirror came up with a Suzuki badge. So you think, right, it's got to be a bike. So we went back the following week <coughs> and that came up. That took about five of us to get out, I think, yeah. in the end. I think we were filming the documentary that We time. was being filmed by somebody doing a documentary on Magnet Fishing at the time, um, a guy called Darshan. They were and doing it with... Yeah, he came and he came with the UK's number one Magnet Fisher. Drastic, um, G. drastic G. So yeah, it was a good day, but we got the bike out before we got there because he'd get the glory from it. But um, yeah, that was that. That's that. Then literally, we obviously all the spokes gone in the front wheel, and it, it, the engine still turned over. You could kick it, but he wouldn't start, obviously. But we had to carry that up to the road, and it was quite way down up a hill. We had to get it to the road, ready for the scrap man to collect. But that was fun. But motorbikes, full ones like that, we find a lot of frames, a lot of motorbike frames where people steal them, strip them, chuck the frames in. Most of them are grappling hooks and most of them are made of alloys. So, and we was at a place um, that was Leicester, about five came out, and you checked them, didn't you? Um, on the is it stolen site? And yes, they were. <laughs> the VIN numbers were still on there and they were stolen. Um, but, and one of them was about a month old, I think, when it was stolen. Yeah, a month old, and that got stolen, stripped, and chucked in there. So, um, you do get a lot of things like that. Do we do the bikes? Um, yeah, I'll let, I'll let you do the bikes. Rally chopper, oh, yeah. but a late one. It's the um, the one they did, the limited edition one. It's a Mark III because it's got the split saddle and you haven't got the gear lever that causes you immense pain. But um, yeah, and the frame on that wasn't steel. It's made of alloy. It is really rotten. It's still in my garden. Um, my wife keeps saying it's turning more like steptoe and son. The yard is, but you know, <laughs> so I have that with a BMX with it and everything as well. That one came from Billy, and that was like brand new. Um, we left that 15 minutes, and someone stole it. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't stay very long, man. So left it. Because we can do it. I'm just going to put it on the corner. Then went back, and it gone. So uh, yeah, it looked like it literally just gone in there, and then somebody stole it within 15 minutes. Oh, um, so you might be fishing out next week. Yeah, it might be there again. Yeah, <laughs> Billy's been quite good. There's been a lot of safes and all sorts of things in there. These were Market Arbor again. Um, like I say, some of the bikes. Is what you call a rider. If we find a rider, we have to get on it. We go riding up and down the bank <laughs> just to prove the can. Scooters, that's another one. We could do a lot of scooters and um, things like that. That was Northampton, that was um, down by Toaster Road. 
but you find bikes everywhere. It amazes me how many bikes that there is. Less than you don't seem to find bikes, but you can go out and find 50 bike locks in a day, where they've been cut. <laughs> you, you do find a lot of bike locks there, but there is so much stuff in there. It's so such a varied amount of stuff. Uh, I'll, do, I'll do this. You want to do the safe? Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. Right. Awesome, yeah. So, as Nigel said before about the safes, um, that's a baby yeah. one. Yeah, they're the baby ones. The criminals, you know, breaking the houses, as most people know. Um, what was the recent story on someone? I think it was, was it Scott? Well, that guy managed to track down the person in safe. Yeah, if you of. can track down the owner of it, it is always good. You know, you can do a bit of digging. If you've got passports, driving licenses, you can. But with social media, you try and get in touch with people, and it doesn't always work. So you just dispose of it. But safes is a very common thing. Two on Friday, no, Saturday last week we had two. Yeah, Both cool. containing passports, driving licences, the usual stuff. Was it real? Yes. Mm -hmm. Take it for about six miles up the road. That was so, in process. It's never taught you, keep going. <laughs> so yeah, we have um, this safe here. This was in Leicester, uh, but we're with the crew at the two at the back. <laughs> Yeah. That was yeah. a good day, that was. That was a really good that day. That was all the motorbikes as well. Yeah. Load of motorbikes. Um, surprisingly, it was... And silver pocket watch. And silver oh, pocket watch. Yeah. <laughs> and um, <coughs> literally, criminals just break into the back. And of course, it's the more easier way and more safer way, or the more dangerous way that they dispose of a safe, is literally just push into water. As, mm -hmm. as most people think, it's, if it's out of your frame of mind, so, I don't know. I, I, how does that go? Should be in the water, you can't see it. It's okay, done. yeah, true, yeah. You, you won't want to bury a safe. <laughs> um, <laughs> and we came across a safe uh, in Leicester. Surprisingly, Leicester's been very paying out for us. We keep going back and back and back and back and back. Still is paying out. Some guy went to the same spot like five times in his YouTube video. One gun, two gun, even three guns came out in one day. Still pulling out from the same place. Uh, surprisingly, strange enough, that safe up there had fireproof and theft resistant, was it? Yeah, burglar resistant. Yeah, burglar resistant. Well, it, really, it wasn't that burglar resistant. It had Big a hole in the back. <laughs> that took two and a half hours to get out. That had 25 passports in it. Yeah. Um, yeah, somebody got the whole family's in there. Jewelry boxes, a lot of jewelry boxes in there. No jewelry, unfortunately. There was a couple of bits, but it's just tat. Well, you say costume jewelry, but. That was hard work. Dan come along at the last five minutes and give us a pull with it, didn't you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, and we have the other safes here, containing passports, um, literally all the bank details, everything like that, uh, which I don't know, there's no way we that could track the owner. Yeah, that was in Bedford. Couldn't read the names, but we could see Bedford on it. And that was billing again. All in billing. I think we pulled out a load of BT phone boxes from that location as well. Yeah, a lot of cash boxes. Yeah, you knew you'd be on the laptop as well. <laughs> uh, and well, they're the building as well. Top corner up top. Top left is Birmingham. Birmingham, yeah. Both had passports, driving licenses, Polish people. I remember it. Yeah. <coughs> but they contain things like that. What are we going on? Uh, you need to wiggle it around. On oh, yeah. the there it is. Now click. What them ones? Yeah, they just click. There you go. Now click. <laughs> now we move on to the historical files. So we have a. Some train sleepers from Fraxton. Um, yeah, track chairs. Yep. What yeah. age are they? Well, the line closed in '65. Yeah. They were dated <coughs> about 1897, I think. And we have the Foreign Hay Castle and some more track bolts at the left side there. All cleaned and all not cleaned. Yeah, we had 29 of those, but that's them. And we have a 15 ton train jack. That was not fun to pull out at all. It weren't fun to carry a mile back to the car either. No. But we, um, that's a Duff Barrett. Was, 15 ton, yeah. And we had to, strangely enough, Nigel was actually going to bring that tonight. <laughs> but we also found a little spanner with it as well. <laughs> so we actually fed that through the middle of it and carried it like a stretcher a mile around the track. I think we only stopped about five times. Yeah. But, <laughs> But also, I'm going to put my lovely assistant down here to hold up his 1930s fruitless machine. It looks like this, but now it sort of looks like that. <laughs> but you can still identify fruitless. You've got the one penny there. And if you catch that, if you wet that, you can actually read what it says about saving your vouchers. 
Oh. It was funny because in the YouTube vid, because we film everything for YouTube on our adventures that we do, he pulled it up and he thought it was a town. I could only see Ets. <laughs> I thought Lilettes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then after a bit of clean, I thought I'd better change that. <laughs> but you can see the writing down the side of it. It's pretty poor. It's a bit more to add to the scrap pile, but yeah. Is there anything else you want to add to the um, <laughs> circle fans we've had? Oh yes, and it's all pouring out all over the place. That's a bridge sign from Leicester, oh, <laughs> but my wife has kindly cleaned it up and painted it. Oh, but um, yeah, they're heavy. That was hard to get off the magnet. Cast iron really is a problem once it grips onto it. But yeah, that one. Have you got any pictures of it? Uh, I don't think we have. No. Right. Okay. That was, you couldn't even read it when it came out. You've got some on your phone, haven't you? Probably, yeah. So if anyone wants to know what it looked like at the, when we fished out before you took a model, uh, we have, as most people, we have the rubbish. <laughs> what, now, this lot? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, as you see, the most common thing to pull out from a canal, in theory, has to be... Shop and tries, yeah. <laughs> now, strange enough, we're in the middle of nowhere, and we pulled out like five shopping trolleys in one go at one point. We were sitting thinking, you know, how did they get there? Yeah, why? Yeah, why? No pounds in them. Yeah, no pounds. <laughs> I mean, how did they leave them there with no pounds? Um, yeah, this is the rubbish after we fished everything out of the canal that day where we pulled out all the bike frames, everything like that. So, this is all that's left over there. Now, don't worry, because even though it looks a bit of a mess there, we call a scrap man, always call a scrap man. If you think about doing this hobby, always call a scrap man at the end of it. Because this is classed at the same point as fly tipping yeah. if you leave it there, and you can still get fined for it. Um, some magnet fishers now leave the tow pass looking like this. Yeah, and it's very dangerous. It's not good for children walking past and all that. And yeah, you do get in a bit of trouble for it as well, if you leave it like that. Um, I don't know what that one is up there, Nigel, what is that? That was in Leicester, wasn't it? That is an electrical isolator. Which is very heavy as well. <clears throat> yeah. Things like that arm, that's the bike in the water at Earthenburg before we moved it out. Yeah. I, I, did, I didn't know that was at first. Is there anything more you want to add on to No, I think that's about it. Yeah. And we have the media coverage that has covered us. <laughs> right. So, as most of you can probably recognise us from, um, or most of you probably can't, we were on <laughs> ITV News in January after we found what was believed a hand, a hand wrapped around a barbell weight <laughs> at the A6 bridge. And the ITV News did a piece on us. They were filming when we found yeah, it. Yeah, they were filming when we out. found it. Uh, I think the report is still. Online, it I think is, if yeah. you think it's you, on, still on YouTube, yeah. yeah, it's still on YouTube. If you type in on Google, Magnet Fisher finds hand, yeah, it will show <laughs> up. <laughs> uh, the Leicester Mercury um, was about all the hand grenades that we've found in Leicester. I think we're starting to really annoy the police. <laughs> in Just the time enough. and resources that it takes, you know, it can tie up six to eight officers for four to five hours, and they say they don't have the time. But on the other hand, you couldn't just throw it back in because children do this. And where we have to be responsible with them, kids are not like that. They would just pick it up and play with it. And it's not right. So unfortunately, it's an occupational hazard. <laughs> and BBC Online? And was, was it BBC <coughs> Online for the... That was just a general thing about it. It was about explosive. They wanted to try and make us look, make the police look bad for moaning. Um, it got twisted, in my opinion, so far that it was just, it was a joke, to be honest with you. But unfortunately, what was in there was not what we said. Somebody did threaten them with liable because they changed everything, and it was just to try and make it, this sound dangerous, uh, a messy hobby, uh, wasting police time. But unfortunately, the press can twist things quite a lot. And the Daily Mail, the Evening Telegraph, the Peace Bird Today, and Narrow Boat World. It's down to this guy <coughs> finding over, I think in... It was 13 yeah, guns at the time. 13 guns in the time, but they twisted it to... 20. 60, 20. 20 guns. Oh, yeah. my days. <laughs> 20 guns 
Of course, I was expecting to get a knock at his door. It was, yeah. <laughs> well, it looks bad when you've only handed 13 in, and it's all over the paper that you found 20. Yeah. <laughs> so, I want to know where the other lot are. Yeah, <laughs> basically. But, yeah, it ended up, um, a news report, they took the story, and it all sounded good on the proofread, and then they said that you'd get paid for it. I thought, well, that's a bonus. Well, I got nothing, and they sold it worldwide. <coughs> it went to Australia. It went to America, it went to China, but I couldn't read that, <laughs> Germany, and they sold it, and yeah, you look at it and you think, yeah, I've said some of that, but the media, unfortunately, yeah, it can yeah. be good, but it can be bad. Mm. TV's better because they can't twist that, mm. you know, because it comes out of your mouth, but what's on paper is not what we say, but there is a lot of emphasis on the press at the moment. A lot of people are trying to get it banned because of the mess, the people that don't clear this stuff up. Uh, only the weekend, somebody took a grenade home, didn't realise, started cleaning it up in his house and realised it was a grenade. That was live. That's the third one now. <coughs> Things like that stupidity will cause a problem. If people are sensible about it, they'll leave you alone. Clear your mess up, they'll leave you alone. Take grenades home, don't hand guns in. That causes problems for all of us. And that's what you fight against. With any hobby, people will spoil it. So... I think that's all we have, unless you want to add anything on, Nigel? No, I think I'm about done. Yeah, I think we're all done. Um, <laughs> I'm open to question if anyone's got any. But feel free. <laughs> so is there an age limit on um, No, there's no age limit. No, if you've got a pacemaker, I'd advise against it, because they do severely mess with them. No age. We go out with a family from Leicester. They've got a four-year-old that loves doing it. Um, yeah, he's a bit hard to catch up at the moment. But yeah, so people from the age of four. We had a newborn baby there. How old was the baby? How old was she? How old? About a week. <laughs> she had her first magnet fishing trip. He's having to think now, look. Four days. Four days old. <laughs> And um, yeah, and he goes right through people in the 70s, 80s. I think if you're fit enough or you're healthy, then why not? Yeah. There we go. So, yep. Yeah. Uh, Eddie? Do you do it mainly from bridges or do you go anywhere on a river? Bridges are the best places to find things um, because obviously, car pulls up, yeah. out the window, gone. Between bridges can be quite good if there's a towpath, people walking the dogs, they'll do things. Other things we found on Saturday, which we're going back there again, because we did the two bridges, which were quite good. But where we parked, we come through this little like, entranceway, and we thought, oh, we'll just have a quick throw there. We was pulling so much stuff out, it got ridiculous. Because people are pulling it in the lay-by, diving out the car, throwing it in, and off they go. So we're going back there, I don't know, I haven't decided, even tomorrow or Saturday. But, um, yeah, that's it. But bridges are the best. In the middle of nowhere, nothing. Yeah, like he was sitting on one side, turning around saying, Gold! And I was like, I want you getting two peas and one peas on my magnet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we had about £43 one day in Leicester. Um, little bags of money that just kept coming up. You got the pound coins, I got the pennies. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, well, you know what they say, for a pound. <laughs> That's it, yeah. The video has caused a bit of a problem on YouTube because yeah. people are saying you rob people's wishes. You know, at the end of the day, but all the money's in the box and it's going in the charity bin. And it's what you miss, day, said. Yeah, I don't want it. At the end of the day, it's a lot of money. I'm going to put it in the coin counter at one of the supermarkets because it's filthy, which most people do, and I'll press the charity button. You know, at the end of the day, I don't want it. It's a few pence, but, you know, uh, there's been a discussion on the internet about it. Some people saying it's not a religious thing, but one bag had money in it and AA batteries. I don't know what sort of signal that was trying to send, <laughs> but, you know... Uh, <laughs> People do strange things. You find a lot of offerings. In Birmingham, you find a lot of the... Oh, I can't think what it's called. The little god with the many arms. Um, yeah, that's it. You find loads of them there. Do you ever find batteries in there at all? Quite often. Also, you have to be careful as well. Yeah. Because you have to be careful with some batteries, because if they get water in... Yeah, that's it. go bang. Get quite a few swollen a mobile bang. phones. Yeah mobile phone yeah. they're quite common yeah. for finding as well that's yeah. but yeah some of the things that have come out they have been pretty swollen um, but batteries they need to be out they shouldn't be in the war i mean the toxins that they're giving off but batteries are well, it's not common. just the toxins they all go bang with a big bang outside our house big men have come and collected up some stuff and all of a sudden they yes. just huge bang <laughs> and it caught fire <laughs> Right, okay, well, you can have the batteries. <laughs> <laughs> it's only a little tiny battery. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Very good. Yeah. Okay.
Nobody's ever asked, has anybody ever fallen in? That was the most important. Me. It didn't appear on a YouTube video, but I got my magnet stuck in uh, Bedford, was it, underneath a bridge. And strange enough, that's where I've lost two magnets now. Yeah. And I was trying to get a magnet, thinking, oh yeah, I'm proper, I'm okay, I can get past this tree, got past it, slipped. Um, there was like a Most people would have walked up. around the back, he decided to walk around the little bit around the front. Yeah. Yeah. And no, the sticking up, I fell down, hit my back, back and I literally rolled in. And next thing he realised is somebody's grabbing his shoulders and just ripping him out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> Which is my second part of the question, do you have to have insurance? Is it Best to have some kind of health right. Yeah. Getting insurance to do this, people have tried, it's really yeah, difficult awesome. because there's no category they use. Mm. Uh, liability insurance, obviously, we've tried marinas, they won't let you because of the liability if you damage someone's boat and things like that. So I think it's more common sense and just don't be silly. I think, you know, it's, mm. you can be safe, you've just got to be sensible, but people have fell in. Yeah. Well, I think there's no questions. Right. I'm going to ask everybody to thank you. Um, <laughs> can I just accept this as a thank you? Oh, well, thank you very much. Did you fish that out of the river? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I can... Questions while we have some refreshments. Yeah. First, we have the very important raffle. Oh, 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 oh,
Right, okay. Well, I've got it. I've got it. People used to find it so much. Yeah. 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 Yeah.